Although Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land with his people, God is merciful and forgiving. We discover that Moses was resurrected. His resurrection helps us to understand the extent of God's plan for us. This is the end of our series on the study of the ancient book of Deuteronomy. We have been searching for those guidelines or principles in Deuteronomy to help us live successful lives. I hope you've gleaned something from my study. And if you have enjoyed this study, press the like button and let me know and share it with your friends and family. Also hit the, the subscribe button if you're viewing from YouTube so that you can be notified when a new video is available. Our next study will be on the book of Hebrews. In this final series on the book of Deuteronomy, we have looked at the main human character in Deuteronomy, Moses. From it, we have learned how we should respond in a crisis. At the same time, we've gotten another chance, another chance to see God's love for his people, even when we misrepresent him. Father, you are worthy of our worship and our praise. Lord, we worship you for who you are. You are our way maker, miracle worker, light in the darkness. Therefore, we worship you. Lord, we want to be with you in eternity. Prepare our hearts and minds to receive you when you return in the clouds of glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As it relates to living our lives according to God's divine purpose for us, our key text is Jude 9, which says, Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. The title of this lesson is The Resurrection of Us All. From what is written in the New Testament, we discover that even though Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land with his people, God had something better in store for him. The earthly Canaan today is known as Jerusalem. It has been a place of war, occupation, and much suffering. Instead of the earthly Canaan, Moses enters the heavenly Jerusalem described in Hebrews 12, 22, which says, but you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to a myriad of angels. Moses is the first example we know about in the Bible of someone who wakes up from the dead. However, we find in Genesis 5, 24, God took Enoch to heaven, for it says, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Elijah too was taken to heaven, according to 2 Kings 2, 11, which says, as they were going along and talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and a horse of fire, which separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. But these men did not die before entering heaven. Moses is the first person who died and woke up from the dead. How long was Moses in the grave? How long did Moses sleep in the ground is unknown. He closed his eyes in death, and whether it was more than 300 hours or 300 years, for him it was the same. He woke up in glory. It also is the same for all the dead throughout history. Their experience, at least as far as being dead goes, will be no different than Moses's. We close our eyes in death, and the next thing we know it is the second coming of Jesus or the final judgment as described in Revelations 20, 7 through 15, which says, now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, 
Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, whose number is at, as the sands of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, and fire came down out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and he who, and he who sat on it, for whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great standing before God and the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to those works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged each one according to his works. Then death and Hades was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I know one thing, I wanna be in the book of life. The final judgment is for those who do not want to spend eternity with God. In his mercy, he honors their request by taking them out of existence. In 1 Corinthians 15, 13 through 22, a great promise is offered to those who accept Christ. However, Paul's words only make sense if we understand that the dead sleep in Christ until the resurrection. It says, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, we are found false witness of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men the most pitiful. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. If we do not have the hope of waking up from the dead, we have no hope at all. When Jesus woke up from the dead, his life was a promise that we too will wake up from the dead. Jesus having purged our sins, that has cleansed us from our sins when he died on the cross as our sacrificial lamb, according to Hebrews 1, 3, which says, who being in the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Christ died and woke up from the dead. And because he woke up, we have hope that should we die before Christ comes again, we will wake up from the dead. Moses, however, is the first example of a fallen human being raised from the dead. It is because of what Christ would do, Moses had been raised. And because of what Christ has done, we too will be raised as well. Thus, we can find in Moses an example of how God saves us by our faith in his mercy. Moses lived by faith, even if 
he made a mistake at the end of his life. Nevertheless, all through Deuteronomy, Moses continues encouraging his people to live a life of faith. We have the choice to choose a life of faith or a life of disbelief and worry and fear. And all through the book of Deuteronomy, we see Moses seeking to call God's people to faithfulness in response. God offers his grace. Like the Israelites, a similar response to the grace is given to us as was given to them. For we too are on the borders of the promised land. God is calling us to faithfulness. May we not make the same mistake as Moses did, for there are grave consequences. But, but if we do, we have an advocate with the Father. Our surety is in Christ Jesus. Now, that's present truth.